recently honored those who we lost on 9-11 and at the same time hit another milestone. Here in West Virginia we passed that number of lives lost on 9-11 by the number lost to COVID. We're averaging 12 fatalities every day right now and the current surge has yet to peak. We must do everything possible to stem this loss even as we mourn those already passed. And with that being said, I want to introduce our first speaker today, who's Rabbi Yureki from Benai Jacob Synagogue. Rabbi? Good evening, everyone. Usually I'd start with a, a prayer, but instead today I'd like to open with a religious plea, a religious call. On these hallowed steps, a lot have come lately to talk about God-given rights, speaking of them in, in the context of vaccine mandates against them and against mask mandates. I think tonight we are together to offer a different message. Tonight we are sending a message to West Virginians about our God-given responsibilities because we know that for those whose faith in God come in so many expressions in America. What unites all faith communities is the reminder that we have more than God-given rights. We have God-given obligations to love, to protect our neighbors, to love and protect the elderly, to love and protect the sick and the vulnerable. All sacred scriptures speak of the obligations that the creator of us all expects of us every day. They are in the sacred text that we revere, that bring us close to each other, and they remind us every day that we are to love our neighbor. We are here tonight because we're not hearing that enough from people in our state. Fellow West Virginians are getting needlessly infected. Our hospitals are getting dangerously overrun and hundreds upon hundreds are dying. And all of this could be avoidable if we exercise the freedom of religion that we have in this country and truly listen to the God we all follow and practice our God-given responsibilities to one another. It is past time for leaders here, for people of all faiths and all expressions to speak up about our obligations to our fellow human beings. We are all responsible for the health and safety of our neighbors. Everyone who values freedom knows in their hearts of hearts that freedom without responsibility is not America. Freedom and responsibility go hand in hand. Masks and vaccines are not challenges to freedom. Masks and vaccines are powerful reminders that we are given the gift by the Almighty to mitigate danger, to cure the sick, and to preserve life. And so tonight, this is not a prayer, it's a call. We must raise our voices that have been silent too long while too many have died. And in one voice tonight, call on people who can make a difference to finally stand up and proudly exercise our God-given obligations that we are given by God to serve others. Let us remember the words that Jews this week on Yom Kippur will read this af on that afternoon on Yom Kippur. Do not stand idly by the blood of your brothers. Let us affirm our greatest obligation and do what is right to save the lives of our fellow West Virginia brothers 
and sisters. Thank you for being here tonight. And thank you, Rabbi. Those are words of wisdom for sure. Our next speaker wears two hats. He's uh, not only our uh, senator from the 10th district in Greenbrier County and the uh, Senate Minority Leader, but he's also uh, Reverend Stephen Baldwin. Senator Reverend. Thank you all very much. Good evening to you. In Matthew chapter 11, Jesus says, Come to me, all you that are weary and heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. And I would humbly submit to you as we gather on this uh, late summer evening that we are weary and we are heavy burdened. Across our state, transmission rates are alarmingly high. Uh, the virus is spreading. Hospitals are at or near capacity. And people are dying in West Virginia. And so we come here tonight to try and refresh our souls for the hard work ahead, the very hard work of healing. It's in times like these where I often ask myself, and I know many folks are asking me this, and perhaps you're asking, um, you're asking this of yourself or others as well. What can I do? What can I do in this circumstance? My grandmother always taught me that it's, it's helpful to begin with prayer. Some people see prayer as an end, but my grandma taught me to see prayer as a beginning. We gather together in prayer tonight, not as a last resort, but as a first step. And not as a substitute for action, but as an action, as a way to actively listen. Not a way to move on, but a way to get in. So we're here tonight to take a moment with each other, to pray together, um, and to take a first step towards healing in our state. I think the more that we can all do that when we go back home to our communities as legislators, uh, the better. There are many weary teachers, nurses, doctors, truck drivers, restaurant workers, uh, students, retail workers all across this state and this nation that need our moral support right now. So I'd ask uh, that you join with me as we approach the Holy One in prayer together here tonight with open hands and open hearts ready to be called to action. Will you please join me in a word of prayer? O Holy One, for the sick and infected, heal and help. Sustain bodies and spirits. For our vulnerable populations, Holy One, protect our elderly and those suffering from chronic disease. Provide for the poor, especially the uninsured. For the young and the strong, Holy One, give them a commitment to take necessary precautions to keep from unwittingly spreading this disease. For our local, state, and federal governments, that they would allocate the necessary resources for combating this pandemic. For our scientific community, those leading the charge to understand the disease and help us through it. O Holy One, give them knowledge. For workers in a variety of industries facing layoffs and financial hardship because of the pandemic, Holy One, keep them from panic and inspire your faith communities with generosity and love. For families and young children, we pray that you would help mothers and fathers to partner together creatively for the care and flourishing of their children. For business leaders having to make difficult decisions affecting the lives of their employees, give them wisdom, O Holy One. For frontline health care workers, keep them safe. Keep their families healthy. O Holy One, help them to stay clear-minded in the midst of the surrounding panic. Give them compassion for every patient in their care. Grant them energy to sustain the battle. They are tired. They are weak. They are worn. Through the storm, through the night, lead them on to the light. Precious Lord, take their hand and lead them on. For patients in the hospital right now, in ICUs, on ventilators, Holy One, be with them now. For families grieving their loved ones. 
Holy One, teach us to be your faithful people in this time of global crisis. Show us what you would have us to do. We pray all this in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Thank you all very much. Be safe. Amen, indeed. And uh, we have one one more reverend to bring up to this podium, and he's Reverend Derek Biondi, who is the uh, chair of the Government Concerns Committee for the West Virginia Council of Churches. Reverend. Hello, my name. My name is Reverend Derek Biondi. I'm a United Methodist pastor, and currently, I like to call myself a freelance liberation theologian. I'm in a season of discernment, and a season of discernment is one surrounded in prayer. Now here in America, we often hear a phrase, thoughts and prayers, very frequently. In fact, it's so frequent that it's almost become ad nauseum. When a tragedy strikes, thoughts and prayers is our response. And while I think thoughts and prayers are a great and good thing, I've come to realize that thoughts and prayers are something that form us. It is not an end point, but rather a beginning point to echo Representative Reverend Baldwin. In these times of thoughts and in these times of prayers, if we really take the time to discern, we come to realize that there's a tug on our heart, a tug to do something that is right and is good. When Jesus was put to the test and said, what are the greatest commandments? He said, love God above all else and love your neighbors as yourself. If loving your neighbor is something as simple as wearing just a little piece of cloth over your mouth, then I do not understand what the issue is. For every debate about right, there is a responsibility that we are called to do. And so as Americans, as people of faith, I would ask you, yes, are your rights important? They absolutely are. But are your responsibilities to others equally as important, or dare I say, even greater? I know that the one that I have faith in would say yes. And so this day, this day of prayer, I do want to close with prayer, but I want this prayer to be a leaping off point, a point where we go from here and we say, not one more. Because I have lost three colleagues. I have lost one church member to COVID. And we have lost far, far too many. It's enough. Let us think and let us pray and then let us act. And let us take the necessary precautions to preserve the lives of our brothers and sisters and all those around us. Let us pray. God, in the face of great tragedy, we often look and wonder, what now? What can we do? So, Lord, open our hearts. Open our minds. Help us to hear what you would have us to do. Help us to take precautions that put the lives of others ahead of our own selfish ambition. Lord, help us to care for all those around us. Because, Lord, we all deserve to breathe. And we should not spread anything that could rob anyone of that great gift that comes from you, the spirit, the ruach, the breath of life. Amen. Amen. Wise words. Wise words of Reverend Biondi. Last but not least, uh, I met this next speaker, when she hopped on a bus in Morgantown with us that was heading for Washington, D.C. for a rally to support the Affordable Care Act when it was under attack in, uh, during the, pres the former administration. But, uh, and now she's an elected member of the House of Delegates. So please, please welcome a delegate of 51st District of Mont County, Danielle Walker. Good evening, everyone. Now, I know that this is a vigil, but you have a voice, and we need to make sure that it is echoed. 
So good evening, everyone. Good evening. Before I am a delegate, I am a mother of two kings. One that is standing with you and another that is looking down upon us all. He is our heavenly guardian angel. See, we need to make sure that we look at each candle lit tonight. Each candle represents 100 of our neighbors, of our elders, as of, of our children, of our first responders, of those that we represent, 3,238 deaths lost to the battle of the coronavirus. Eight hundred and fifty two hospital cases, eighty three percent unvaccinated, two hundred sixty seven ICU admits, ninety percent unvaccinated. But the next number is the hardest for this grieving mother. 162 on ventilators, 91% unvaccinated. I can tell you and I can show you, Dimitri Mac Walker was vaccinated and he died on a ventilator. So what are we saying to those who have diseases within their body and it is not due to the coronavirus? When we scream that everyone matters and all mountaineers are free, do your part. Wear a mask. Mm -hmm. See, with death, it comes pain and progress and power. And I'm asking each and every one of us here today to get uncomfortable in your power because we have all suffered the pain from each briefing. Today, it hurt a little harder. I couldn't do my job today and watch the rest of the briefing as a mother. Linda Lanier was brave enough to show the picture of her son, Joe Goodnight, on a ventilator. Go back and look at that briefing. Because I'm stuck in pain. But I'm here today for the progress. See, when we deal with this pandemic, it's pain and paperwork. See, we may be tired, but I'm no way tired. I'm taking a stand every day with every breath that I have. It is for my neighbor so I can protect them. It is for us to say this is important. This is public health. This is not political. When you receive those death certificates from the 3,238 West Virginians, it doesn't have their political party on there. the ages, you should think about your elders. You should think about your mother and father. You should think about the trauma. You should think about me. Each and every one of us have lost someone to the coronavirus. Yes, we have. Some of us have even been positive. We ran to the fire to get tested. 
We fought for our counties to have tests. We fought for West Virginia to have vaccinations. They no longer need to sit on the shelf. They need to be in each and every one of us. I am not taking any excuses. And that is my freedom. It is my liberty to carry the grief and the pain and the trauma of my neighbor, these mountaineers of 3,238. We mourn as a state. And the best thing we have against this deadly virus is vaccine. Remember these lights as you walk away tonight. Remember these lights as you wake up tomorrow morning. Remember these lights as you go to your interim meeting. Remember these lights when you support your public health department. Essential workers are still our heroes. They go beyond healthcare workers. They go beyond the EMT. They go to the grocery store workers. They go to our educators. They go to our musicians. They go to our child care workers. So I ask you this evening to make a declaration with me. And we're going to practice on the count of three. We're going to say we are one as we witness this beautiful sunset. So on the count of three, I need everyone to say we are one. You ready? One, two, three. We, we are one. one. I'm gonna say a sentence and I need you to say we are one at the end. Love myself. We are, we are one. one. Love my neighbor. We are, we are one. one. Protect my neighbors we by are giving are unselfish one. love. We, we, are, we one. are one. As I hold these individuals close to my heart, because sometimes thoughts and prayers get overrated, I know. And it's time for action. So I ask each and one of you to have those uncomfortable conversations. Remember, these individuals, their family, their friends, their county, you are part of that because this is our state. Thank you. I am Delegate Danielle Walker. More words of wisdom. We are one, and we are done now. So go forth and spread the word. Amen. Amen. Amen.